Hello, my name is Hui Han. I'm from Princeton NLP. Today I'm presenting our work, Digital Gold Standard, Reevaluating Conversational Question Answering. This is a joint work with Tianyu, Manon, and Danxi. Conversational QA aims to build machines that answer human questions in information-seeking conversations. We have a machine that have access to some external knowledge that could be in the format of a single paragraph, document collection, knowledge base, multimodality, and etc. And we have a human who is curious about some certain entity. The human is going to keep querying the model in the form of a conversation to seek as much information as possible about that entity. The challenge of this task is that the questions need to be understood from the conversation history. In recent years, we've seen many conversational question answering datasets. The ones that only require a single paragraph, the ones that would rely on a document collection, and those that rely on the knowledge bases or other modalities. Most of these benchmarks have a flaw in their evaluation. These benchmarks consist of pre-collective human-human conversations. And when we use these conversations to evaluate the model, the model might make mistakes. In that case, the benchmarks always provide the gold answers during evaluation, even when the predictions are wrong. And they always query the model with the next pre-collected question. Here's the problem. The models do not have access to gold answers in real-world human-machine conversations. So we would like to ask these questions. How do current conversational QA models perform in human-machine conversations? How do current automatic evaluation reflect human judgment? How can we improve the current automatic evaluation? And lastly, what are important for a good conversational QA model? Before we answer these questions, let's briefly look at the models we experimented with. We used the, uh, the QA version of BERT. We used Graphflow, which used recurrent graphic neural network to understand the conversation history. We use HAM, which has a special history attention module to help the model understand history given the question. And we have XCORD, that use question rewriting and consistency regularization to train the model to predict better during inference. So what do human machine conversations look like? The biggest difference is that when the model makes a mistake in these conversations, the humans can adjust the next question based on the model prediction. And this also has another effect, which means that different models might result in different conversations. We did a human evaluation on 100 quark dev set evidence passages. We collected more than 1400 human machine conversation and more than 15,000 question answering pairs. These data, we released them on our GitHub. So given the human evaluation data, we want to ask, are human machine conversations similar to human human conversations? Let's first look at the percentage of unanswerable questions in the human machine conversations of the four models. And let's compare it with the static quark data set, which consists of human human conversations. We can see that humans can ask humans ask more unanswerable questions in human machine conversations than in human human conversations. Let's also look at the percentage of questions where the model predicted as unanswerable. If we compare the gold history evaluation and the human evaluation, we see that three out of four models, the models predict more questions as unanswerable in human machine conversations than in gold history evaluation. So we're curious what happens with the human machine conversations such that there's way more unanswerable questions. Let's look at what happens in a typical conversation. We have this paragraph about Billy Graham. We provide the first question from Quark uh, in place of the human, to which the model answered cannot answer. The human now cannot ask, ask a follow-up question, so they try to switch topic and happen to ask an answer, unanswerable question. The human further switches topic by asking an open question. In this case, the model can answer anything but cannot answer, and then that will be correct. So because of the low quality model answers, humans ask more unanswerable questions and open questions. Given the distribution shift of the questions in human machine conversations, our next question is, 
Thus, the gold history evaluation agree with the human judgment. Let's look at the relative ranking of the four models in the gold history evaluation where we used average word level F1. We see that BERT, BERT is ranked the last and its scored is ranked the highest. But if we switch the human evaluation, uh, GraphFlow is ranked the last and its scored is ranked the best. By comparing these two, we see that gold history evaluation ranks model differently from human judgment. Can we do better in automatic evaluation? The natural next step is to simply use the model's prediction in the history. This method has also been explored by previous work. We tried it too, and it seems like there is a large performance drop uh, from gold, a gold history evaluation to predicted history evaluation, which is expected from the low quality model predictions. However, if we dig through the surface and look at the conversations in the predicted history evaluation, we would notice that simply using models predictions may invalidate the next question. So if the model make the mistake on the current question and we keep using the pre-collected next question, this next question would not be resolvable given the current conversational context. And in that case, this question is invalid and the model cannot answer this question either. We, we call these questions having unresolvable coreference. This means that in these questions, there should be a pronoun or a definite article reference that's not resolvable from the conversational history. In this example, the word it is not resolvable. This is because these questions are usually collected given the gold answer. Based on this analysis, we propose to rewrite question with unresolvable coreference. In the context where the model made a prediction and we want to understand the next question, we use the coreference resolution model to resolve the entity of interest in the current question using predicted history and the gold history separately. If the resolutions don't match, then we substitute the entity of interest with its mention in the gold history. If the resolutions do match, then there's no need to rewrite. How is our rewritten question evaluation? Is it closer to the human judgment? If we look at the relative ranking of the models, then we see that both rewritten question and human rank GraphLow the lowest and rank XCORD as the best. So they do rank in the same way. We have a more fine-grained evaluation called model pair ranking evaluation. In this case, we pair up the four models and we have six model pairs. In each of the model pair, we calculate the percentage of passages for which any metric, the gold history or the re rewritten history, any metric that ranks that the model performance the same as human judgment. To be more precise, if both the metric and human rank that model A is better than model B, then they agree with each other. Otherwise, if they rank differently, then they don't agree with each other. Let's look at the result. The rewritten question constantly outperforms gold history evaluation in terms of the similarity of ranking in the human judgment. So a rewritten question evaluation uh, is more similar to human judgment. Given all the analysis we made before, the last question we want to ask is how to make a good conversational QA model. Here we provide some of our insights. First, we think modeling question dependencies on conversational context is essential for, for answering the answerable questions. These questions will require span prediction. We see BERT that has no explicit modeling of any kind. And we see GraphLow, HEM, and XCORD model question dependencies uh, through special architecture or the training technique. And the result of answerable question F1 score shows that GraphLow, HEM, and XCORD uh, perform better than BERT in, in terms of span prediction. So our conclusion is modeling question history and question contact dependency helps with span prediction. Our second insight is calculating unanswerable probability together with the span probability 
would help with the unanswerable question's accuracy. We see that in this case, graph flow has the lowest unanswerable accuracy of all four models. This is because graph flow has a separate neural network for predicting answerability from predicting the span. And this neural network is hard to calibrate. And as a result, the, performance, the overall performance of GraphLow is also dragged down by its unanswerability prediction performance. I would like to summary our contributions in this work. We conduct the first large-scale human evaluation on conversational QA systems. We discover that human-machine conversations have different question and answer distribution from human and human conversations. We discover that gold history evaluation of current benchmarks does not agree with human judgment in human machine conversations. We propose a new evaluation protocol with question rewriting. Because simply using models prediction in the history will result in invalid questions because of the incoherent history. And rewriting question evaluation resolves the invalid questions and is closer to human judgment. We provided some insights on better conversational question answering modeling. First, modeling question dependencies on conversational context helps with spam prediction. Calculating an answerable probability together with spam probability helps with answerability prediction. Lastly, we would like to uh, say something about our future direction of our work. Tra we will start training model for the rewritten question evaluation protocol. Uh, for example, we could start training model using the model's own prediction history, which was explored and have good effect in the previous work. Here's the end of our talk. Thank you for listening. The code and human evaluation data is on our GitHub, and uh, we provide the email for contact. Thank you.